All right, Eric, uh, from the Now for Later pod, you also play basketball here. That's cool. Every once in a while, when there's time. Yeah. When there's time. <laughs> you used to play more basketball. You got uh, you hurt your knee. How, how you doing yeah. now? What's going on? Yeah, I'm doing really well. Uh, obviously, we just spoke a minute before um, the interview. I'm actually at a, a treatment facility right now. Um, starting last week, I started running on one of those cool treadmills that'll you know, change your body weight. So right now I'm changing, you know, just doing light jogs at, I think it was like 35% of my body weight. So I feel great. I feel like I can run forever because it's, you know, nothing, but um, really good progress. It, it's been amazing because, you know, they gave me a deadline or, or um, you know, a projected amount of weeks that I'd be out and we're about halfway there, but it's looking like it's going to be quicker. Um, you know, there's been no swelling, no pain, really no bad reaction to anything. Um, so we're just going to keep ramping it up. Um, and hopefully I'm back here soon in just a couple of weeks. That's awesome. That's great news. Uh, in terms of being hurt this time and being in the G league, but now you have a podcast and sort of controlling like what information is out as an athlete, obviously, which is, this yeah. is the player empowerment era, right? And I am right. transfer portal more media. You can control your own media. You don't have to depend on anybody else. What's that been like for you to sort of like, okay, I, I can tell what I want about my knee right. or not. And, and you can sort of see this journey of recovery as well. Yeah. I mean, first and foremost, just having something is keeping me sane, you know, and I've, I've actually talked a lot, you know, that's a bit of big talking point on my podcast is whether you're hurt or not, you know, it's, it's good to have something else. It's good to have something to tie your identity into. Obviously I've been on your show to talk about it, but it's it's been more real and more relevant now than ever because it sucks being hurt like and, and even before my surgery i was out for four weeks because we were trying different things you know different um you know injections and different type of therapies and, and just trying to figure it out and then we decided to do the surgery so even though it's only been six weeks since the surgery it feels like it's been well it has been months because i was out before that um, so just having something else has kept me kind of sane. You know, there's only so much therapy I can do. There's only, um, you know, so many upper body lifts that I can do. Like, like it's easy to get frustrated when you're hurt, especially when your team is struggling, which, which we have been a little bit. Um, and so it, it's nice having something. And then, yeah, like you said, you know, being able to then turn it into a story, you know, like it's something I talked about on my episode last week, something that's improved. Um, since starting this podcast is my ability to to tell stories, you know, which is which is a you know important skill to have in life. And now I get to you know spin this in a positive light and and talk about it and hopefully help at least one other person once you know they confront something like this, which is inevitable for for a lot of people, not just one. Yeah. So if if it's your knee as an athlete, that might be something else, right? For people who aren't athletes, like yeah, right. We all have this. It's been fun to see who you've had on the show, by the way. John Stockton, Steve Young, KVN, Dar uh, Darren Williams, Avery Bradley, yeah. Michaela Skinner, among others. What? Wh ah. Who? Who's the person you want on that you think you can get that you haven't had on yet? Ah, you know, there's so many people. I just have this running list. Um, like. It, it, it's been fun because like my family has gotten in into it and, and, you know, friends and just like acquaintances, like when someone they think of like, I'll get these random texts, like, Hey, you should, or like with an article or a link or whatever. And they're like, you should have this person on, you know, cause they're, they're doing what, what you're trying to do. Um, and so that's been really fun. And so I have this running list of probably like three, 400 people that, who you know, I'm never going to get to <laughs> all of it. Um, but you know, the one, the one that would just be awesome. Um, and I've always thought this, but then, you know, think it even more since I ran into him a couple of weeks ago is Shaq. I mean, Shaq is like, obviously larger than life, literally and figuratively, like he's everywhere. He's on every other freaking commercial that I watch when I watch basketball games, then he's on TNT. He's been in movies. He's rapping like, you know, he, he'd be so much DJ fun. Diesel. I, DJ Diesel, he's all yeah. over the world doing concerts. Like, Great. obviously, I had his son on the on the show. Sharif, we're we're close from last year, and, and so that was fun. But I had actually, despite having a lot of um, mutual friends and and just connections through the NBA, um, I had never met him. Um, you know, he's so busy. He he would watch our games, and he knew who I was, but he was never able to come because he's flying constantly between Vegas and Atlanta, and who else knows, you know, or where else? Like, it could be. A, so many places, but 
he was at the the lifetime facility um uh, where we live like the lifetime gym like right across the street from us it's like a public gym no i mean yeah oh. i mean it's a nice gym it's a lifetime gym it's nice but like yeah. yeah it was just you know it's his gym it's where he goes it's and it's where we live yeah and i was walking in and and he popped out of this car you know i should have known i mean the car was enormous um <laughs> And like it, it was funny because I I feel like I know him like I said because of these mutual friends because of Sharif, so like without even hesitating or thinking we made eye contact and I was like, "What's up, Shag Daddy?" And, <laughs> 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 and like and like running it back, I was like, "Did I really just say that?" But like you know he he's so cool, he's so charismatic, like and and he you know it was cool for me one because he knew who I was, um, obviously watching the games through his son Sharif. Um, and then he, he knew my son's name too. He was like, cause I was walking with my family and, and he was like, there's, he's like, there's Jojo. He's like, uh, <laughs> what, what's, what's the, what's the other one's name? And, and like, I should have, and then he shook my son's hand with like just his finger and my, my son's hand was like <laughs> a, a grain of rice, a grain of rice on his finger. But like, I, I should have gotten a picture of him, but it was just cool. He's just. He's just an unbelievable character, and he does a lot of really cool things. So I'd love to have him, and 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 who knows, maybe maybe down the road it'll work. But he's a busy guy. All these people are busy, so it's it's hard to get any of them. I love that. What's your other kid's name? Hey, what's up? <laughs> it's the best. Hey, it's like beautiful family. I was like, thanks, Jack, thank, Daddy. Thank you, thank you, Jack, Daddy. <laughs> it was great. That's great. Let's talk about BYU. Obviously, okay. a tremendous start. Disappointing game Saturday to lose at Utah. But uh, what have you seen from a distance of uh, BYU hoops? Because it's very different from last year. Yeah, you know, I I think what I love two things. I mean, I I love more than two things. But the first thing, two things that come to mind are one, you pretty much have you brought up last year. You have a lot of the same guys. You know what I mean? So I, I love seeing. You just don't see nowadays like especially in college like teams and players sticking it out like together as the whole unit um you know some people listening to this will be like oh that's ironic coming from eric mika but <laughs> like they're you know they all they're all there like yeah and, and and you can tell that they like each other you know obviously i i know the players um a little bit from workouts in the summer you know i interact with them on social media like you can tell that they genuinely like each other which is which is huge you know like they hang out off the court like as stupid as it seems like it matters you know um cuz at the end of the day when when you're looking to the guy next to you and you see a you, you know you see him more like a brother than you know just a teammate or an acquaintance then you're going to make that extra pass you're going to you're going to dive on the floor you're not going to worry about foul trouble or having a bad shooting game if he's playing well you know so so I really think that matters, and I think you see um, that it translates. And, you know, the second part kind of piggybacks off that. Like, I love that we don't have, like, a guy. You know, obviously we have, you know, guys that are starring in their roles. You know, Jackson Robinson's been been kind of the scorer. But I wouldn't even say he's the guy. You know, any given night, like, different guys are, are, are stepping up to the plate and making big plays. And, again, I think that's um, a big part of a, a winning culture and a recipe for success. So, Hopefully it continues that way. Like you said, Saturday, tough game, disappointing game. But, you know, it's not like Utah is some horrible program. You know, they're winning games as well. They have a great coach who knows what he's doing. And they have, you know, pro prospects on their team. So, you know, you want to be 9-0, and but they're in a great spot. Obviously, net rankings are showing that. And like I said, more importantly, you're seeing them gel as a team. Um, and so the, the the real tests are coming in the Big 12, but but they're off to a great start to be ready for it. Is BYU going to compete better than you thought in the Big 12s with this start? Because I think that feels like the consensus, but I want to get your opinion of like, at first I was pretty intimidated by the league, like, ah, hopefully you can scratch out a few. But it feels like BYU can go in there and and uh, approximate 500 a couple games below or above and, and get in the tournament. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the the possibilities are endless. I do think that's a, that's a safe um, betting point. And – the the thing is, it's so college basketball is just so fickle, and, and sports in general, just because it's it's such a momentum thing. You know what I mean? It's a momentum and a swagger and a confidence, and it doesn't matter who you are or who you're supposed to be and projected to be. If if you have those intangibles that I was talking about earlier, you you know, 
you make those small plays and those effort things and you're in the best shape and you've taken, you know, the most three pointers over the summer, which we know BYU has like, and, and, and you're playing and you're gelling, like you really don't know, like you might have confidence and, and, and really beat everybody's expectations of you. So um, yes, I would definitely say with the start that they've had, um, it has absolutely changed my outlook on, on how they're going to do in the big 12. Now they have to go do it. But um, like I've said a couple times, they have the pieces um, and, and they have most importantly, the momentum. So I, I think they're going to be all right, but we'll see. It's a tough league. It's a tough league. I, I'm not mad if, if we don't come out and dominate the first year, you know? Yeah. Listen, I would take uh, eight and 10 right now in league. I, For sure. I, just, I mean, I just would, I might even take seven and 11 right now. I mean, I would take it because it's probably a tournament bid, you know, and, and at the end of the day, that's that's what you're playing for, you know, and, and that means that you've beat seven or eight really quality teams, which is way more than than we have in the past, you know, in conference play. Like you only get a couple chances to beat really quality teams and and then the rest of them, they're games you're supposed to be winning. And those those are trap games is, is how I like to call them. So way, way better position to be in. 12 of the top 14 are in the top 83 of net. And there are two that are not, but they are still inside the top 200. It's You don't have yeah. anybody in, that's going to be a quad four. You know what I mean? No. So, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Well, best of luck with uh, with the knee. Uh, keep Thank running you. at like 35% body weight so you feel like you're uh, these BYU <laughs> distance runners. Kenneth Rooks over here uh, yeah. winning netties. But, uh, yeah, keep up the good work on the podcast, and uh, we'll see you soon, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Eric Mika.